मैं आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ After finishing up my master's degree in Boston, I decided I wanted to take a corporate job in India, and I moved here in 2007 to New Delhi. After a year and a half, I moved out to Jharkhand, to a small village, and started working for an NGO. It was it was there that um, that I started teaching English in the mornings before school, or before uh, before work, and in 2008, at the end of of the the year, I went back to the U.S. But then I decided I wanted to come back to India. So in 2009, in January, I came back and I, I co-founded an NGO called Yuva uh, with three friends, and some of you might have heard of it. It's a story of triumph of human spirit against all odds. These girls have fought against prejudice and gender discrimination, slapped, kicked. and made to sweep floors by the bureaucrats in Jharkhand's panchayat it is simultaneously a story of how elitist how unfair how cruel our society can be but it is also a story of how if people and sometimes children decide to fight the odds they can in, fa in fact become anything they dream of we are very proud of you rinki thank you aap sabko keh dijiye thank you i'm extremely happy and thrilled and uh, i hope there are more uh, cases like this because i i also do believe sports is something which is a huge equalizer i think it should become a national movement now when people think of you or people who know of of the organization usually think that we are a football club which is fine because the girls have become very good footballers but actually uh we started as a scholarship fund i had never played football so we had two groups of of girls and you a one girl that, one group of girls that was very small from my my old english class and we were spending a lot of money on them uh, sending this small group of girls to a very good private school our second group of girls was a group of girls who decided they wanted to play football and surprisingly for us the girls who were going to government schools and who were playing football became much better students and we thought why is that i mean that's really surprising we've got two groups of girls one one going to a great private school the other group going to government schools and what we figured out what we realized is that the girls who were playing football were coming every single day to you sometimes twice in a day the girls who were on scholarship were coming once in a month to pick up their school fees and so the girls who were playing football they were creating a space where it was cool to be an ambitious girl they were creating a space where uh, where there was positive peer pressure to go to school even if there wasn't any pressure from home and where If one girl was uh, would drop out, the others would go in and bring her back. So here, here are a few of them here. So now, six six years later, uh, football has become our most important tool for education. We have classes, academic classes, every hour of the day when the girls are not going to school. We have intensive English classes. We have math and science classes. We've got workshops on life skills and female health uh we have we have workshops where uh professional women come in and share their experiences with the girls and we have exam prep now what what really surprises people usually who come by ua is what time this all starts in the morning the girls get up at 4:00 4:30 in the morning to get to their 5:00 a.m. classes at ua which they schedule themselves so obviously we don't really want to get up that early in the morning but we have to because that's the time they're scheduling their classes and even with all of that with all those before and after school classes that they've got the girls and you are still woefully unprepared to enter good universities with all this hunger and desire to learn their their academic level is still far too low the motto in most of their schools should be memorize cheat repeat in a lot of their schools they've got one teacher for 40 up to 100 or more students and uh and in in jarkand also the 6 out of 10 girls drop out of school and become child brides in 2013 and 2014 uh you had the chance to bring the first teams ever from india to the biggest football tournaments in spain and the us in spain the girls won a bronze medal and captured the imagination of the entire nation the team captain for both those years is a girl named rinky Now she was chosen not by us but by her own teammates. So for for these two teams which did so well 
playing abroad, we didn't necessarily choose the best football players. We chose the girls who ranked the best in a values ranking of positivity, honesty, caring, selflessness, and team unity. The girl who ranked unanimously, unanimously number one in every single one of those rankings by her teammates is named Rinky. So I've got the great pleasure of introducing her to you today. Ladies and gentlemen, Rinky Kumari. Hello, I am Rinky. I'm 15 years old. I come from Hutu, a village in Jharkhand. I want to tell you why India needs more good school for girls in villages. My mother went to school for two days in her whole life. Her brother and sister went to school, but my mother was kept in the field because one person had to wash the cows. She feels very bad about having no education. She cannot sign her name or speak Hindi. She speaks only Sadri. A few times I tried to teach her to write or speak Hindi, but she couldn't learn. She was married around 15 or 16 years old. When I was younger, my mother works was to carry bricks at a bricks factory. This was very hard work and she did not make much money. She would come home very tired in the evening, but she still did all the housework. My father did not help my mother because he drinks alcohol. Now, my mother works at a mineral water factory, and this is better work. She gives money for my sister and my education. Other people in my village only save money for their daughter's dowry, not their school. But my mother wants her daughter to be educated because she never had the chance. A girl need A girl need education, so she knows what she is signing. A girl who is not educated could put her signature anywhere and not understand what it means. This is bad because she can be tricked. About three years ago, my uncle came to my grandfather's house with a paper. He lied to my grandfather and said that if he signed the paper, my mom would get a job. My grandfather cannot read, so he signed the paper. But the paper actually sold my family's land and my uncle kept the money. My mom was very angry. Other people in my village have been tricked this way too. When I was in primary, I had fun at my school. We played in the yard or in the forest. We did not spend a lot of time in class. In class, there was only one teacher for 40 students. The teacher did not know if the student understood or not. He would stand in front of the class and read and read and read and then the bell would ring and we would go play again. I did not learn anything there. At UA, I joined an English class taught by Queen, an American girl. Our class was small. We sat in a circle with her, and she had a girl who did not understand. At first, I was not a good student in her class because I never did her homework. But Queen checked every girl's homework every day and sometimes gave prizes for girls who did hard work. I start doing my homework. This class was important to me because I saw that my academic level was lower than the other girls. I wanted to improve. My friends on my UA football team support me in my study. When I don't know how to do my homework or I don't understand something at my school, my teammates help me. If I don't come to practice or class one day, someone will ask me, 
why I didn't come. I say I had work in my field. Then the next day, my teams come to the field and helps me finish the work. If a girl has no education, she is dependent on her parents for money. She can't buy anything without asking her for parents' money. If her mother and father want to get her married, she has to say yes because she doesn't know what else she can do. If I were not on my UA team, my parents would want get married next year. I think they would marry me too, any boy, good or bad. But this won't happen because of my UA team. Neha, a lady who works with UA, has met my parents many times. She talked to them about my future and my marriage. She helps them understand that if they want me to get a good job someday, I need to stay in school. If my parents try to arrange marriage, Neha and my UA team would come and make them understand that this is bad for my future. Marriage still makes me feel scared. When my parents talk about me getting married, I just say, no, 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 no. In the future, I want to become a divorce lawyer. <laughs> Many girls and women want to divorce because their husband hurt them drink alcohol, and spend all the family's money on drinking or gambling. But women do not know how to get a divorce. I want to help women so they can be free to get a good job and save money for their future. To become a divorce lawyer, I need to study well and attend a university. I would be the first person in my family to go to university. I work hard at my high school, but I know my high school will not help me get me university. It is a government school. There are too many students and few teachers. But I feel confident that my UA team will help me get my dream. This is my story, but it's the story of most girls in villages. In Spain and the US, I saw that all women had a education and a job. I want the girls of the India to have the same chance. But we need to support each other. Thank you. OK, let's have one more round of applause for Rinky. One of the ways that we run our programs is through amazing volunteers, and many of those are from India. Uh, last summer, we had a summer school, which was 20 days long. And on the first day, uh, we had a, a, an intern from uh, Delhi named Prabud. And the girls in his math class were scoring an average of 30% on their end of the year math uh, exams. On the, by the 20th day, they were scoring more than 80%. So this is how we run our, our programs in a, in a low cost and highly effective way. So, uh, so students like yourselves who are looking for experience, looking for something a little bit off the beaten path like we're talking about today, please feel free to, uh, to contact us at ua-india.org, and um, we'd love to have you come and work with us. Thanks a lot.